Oscar Samuels, okay? And this is NBS Face Off. Welcome to NBS Face Off, Mr. Ernest Rubondo. Thank you very much, Oscar. And uh, I thank NBS for inviting the Petroleum Authority of Uganda to this interview. And good evening, viewers. Yes. You're the executive director of the Petroleum Authority of Uganda from director of petroleum in the Ministry of Energy and previously the PEPD. Sometimes I used to call it the PPED because it's easier to say. And uh, remember I frequented uh, with other journalists as well at the time and people interested in Entebbe visiting the PEPD and the sophistication that you had at the time from geological explanations. I, I, I even once sent students over there um, reading the weather and so on. But I put to you now perhaps that you're in early retirement. Well, uh, thank you very much for those kind words about the Petroleum Exploration and Production Department, which I had the privilege to head. Uh, I, I wonder why you say I'm in early retirement. Is it mm. to do with my age or is it to do with, <laughs> no, the, with the, the sector work, has matured? With, with, with the work of the Petroleum Authority of Uganda, I, I basically I would say you don't have any work to do. Well, Oscar, uh, I'm surprised at what you're saying because mm. uh, the Petroleum Authority of Uganda has a very important and significant role to play in the development of Uganda's oil and gas sector, mm. and especially in ensuring that the oil and gas sector in Uganda does benefit the country. That one, yes. But when you were PEPD, you did a lot of work leading to the exploration, a lot of work uh, on the fines, and you could at any one time describe which, uh, I forget what you used to call them, you talk about this pit, you don't use the word pit, this the oil wells. find this one, the wells, the yes. and the location of the wells and who is working with which well. But from there to director level and then really back into the authority uh, as an authority, I would put to you, for example, your PAU, how well facilitated are you in comparison to Sinoc? Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I, I can understand where you're coming from and maybe it is a question of us not having shared sufficient information. But I'd like to share with you that uh, the oil and gas sector in Uganda has been benchmarked on the best practices around the world. And one of these best practices is the recognition that in the oil and gas sector, you have aspects of policy, you have aspects of regulation, and you have aspects of business. Mm. And best regulatory practice recommends that these three aspects are not mixed. And so if the sector is going to succeed at all, these three aspects have to be separated. And, and no one would disagree with you on that. And we have mm. been to countries where they have not been separated and the challenges out of that are clear and glaring. Mm. But if we come back specifically to the situation in Uganda... Before you, before even on, on that aspect as well, um, the, 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 you have President Museveni, though this, these days he says it less, when he talks about his oil, when he says he's the one that signs off the oil, his own will sign off. So what does Mr. Rubondo do? If you imagine an everyday person um, watching us on television now, and I'm saying to Mr. Rubondo, what do you do at the Petroleum Authority? Well, His Excellency the President is the President of Uganda. He has mm. been elected by the people of Uganda. He, he has a mandate mm. to really oversee and direct on everything. But that really doesn't mean that the Petroleum Authority of Uganda's roles uh, are undermined or are not there in any way. Because as I will explain, if you will allow me, mm. I will explain to you what the Petroleum Authority does. Uh, first of all, the Petroleum Authority is one of the three pillars in the country that uh, contribute to the development of the oil and gas sector. The first one, as you will appreciate, is the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development, which deals with the policy. It directs which aspects should be done and how they should be done. And that's what you're doing? No, that's the mm. Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. Mm. Then you have the National Oil Company, which is doing the business aspects of the oil and gas sector on behalf of Uganda as a country. And you mentioned SINOC. Mm. 
Yeah. Sinoc is an oil company, and we can't sit here in Uganda and just have foreign companies doing the work. We need to start developing our own companies so that we can also have Sinox in future. And that's the role of the National I, I, Oil I, Company. We have interviewed, I have interviewed uh, the National Oil Company, and it is one of the questions I put to them. Can they really compete with Sinox, for example? Can they compete with Talo? And, 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 and is that what you do? You make an environment for them to be able to compete with Sinox and Talo? Well, the only reason the National Oil Company can't compete with Talo and Sinoc now is because it's a new institution, it's a young institution. I'm sure if you met Sinoc when it was one year old or two years old or three years old, it was probably at the same level as Unoc. But there's no doubt that the people and the facilities and the institutions that are, or rather the regulatory framework that's being put in place, the National Oil Company will be able to grow into a big company. But going back to what the Petroleum Authority does, uh, because I found your question quite uh, challenging that you, in your opinion, the Petroleum Authority doesn't do anything. But the Petroleum Authority... That it can easily retire and we would do well. Well, I think the country would not do well if it didn't have somebody regulating the country's oil and gas sector. Mm. Because the role of the Petroleum Authority of Uganda is to regulate the entire value chain, uh, well, the upstream and midstream aspects of the value chain because the downstream these petrol stations and, and, and so on are still regulated by the ministry mm. but the exploration development production refining transportation storage are all regulated by the petroleum authority of uganda and you will agree with me oscar mm. i am aware that you are a teacher uh, or rather you are into the education sector I, I the moment there isn't well. if the mm. sector is not regulated you can know, you can imagine what happens. Yes. Now I can go a bit further and explain to you what do we do in regulating the oil and gas sector. And, and I'm going to request that you do. But I'll give you an example that um, all you're saying you used to do when you were still at PEPD and the professionals were allowed to work. How do you manage the politics? You have um, a, a Professor Pamela Mbawazi, and I'm quoting from independent magazine from January 2020. She's the board chair of NPA. And she thinks maybe you would struggle with political interference right now, unlike in the past. First of all, let me step back to your first question. When we were together, uh, when we were in the Petroleum Expression and Production Department under the ministry, mm. the challenge was, was that we were doing the policy, we were doing the regulation, and we were doing the business to some extent. Mm. So you had these three important aspects which under best regulatory practice are supposed to be separated. We're doing them together. I must also say that in the oil and gas sector, we've been very supported. We've been very lucky and very privileged. We have been given the opportunity to do our work. We've been given the opportunity to give advice. This advice has been considered. And so I, 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 I have not had an experience of in, Interference, interference, interference that is not appropriate. Of course, naturally, uh, politics is, considers everything, takes everything into consideration. And there's no harm listening to somebody who has had other aspects uh, who are in mind asking you or talking to you about how they relate to the other aspects. Because I can concentrate on my oil alone, but the other aspect may come and make the oil aspect, you know, not, not, not succeed. So there is that aspect of the need to have the people who listen or who deal with the other sectors of the economy coming in to listen to you. And we've been privileged so, because so we've been listened to. That you that the kind of regulation that you have, just before I interrupted you, you're, you're making a good point about the kind of regulation you have. Because uh, uh, you're going to describe the kind of regulation you have. And I wanted to put it just a few years back about that big battle you had in Parliament that excluded your contribution to it, by the way, when parliamentarians wanted uh, transparency regarding contracts? Well, the, first of all, it, 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 it didn't exclude our participation at all, because mm. as you know, the person in Parliament who was responding to the Honourable Members of Parliament was the Minister. And as you are aware, the Minister depends on her technical team to prepare the responses. So we actually played our role. We don't have seats in Parliament. We couldn't go yeah. to Parliament. But there's it, no it doubt. It was even doubt uh, eventually. But then one wonders then what the, what the hustle was about. Maybe if it, 
asked Ernest Rwondo directly, they wouldn't have needed a battle. Well, the, the member, honorable members of parliament, if they, they cannot ask, in committees they can ask Ernest Rwondo, but mm. you would appreciate that their colleague is the minister, is the honorable minister. So they could only get to the honorable minister. And definitely, as the day follows night, the moment the honorable minister got the information and made it available to them, uh, the, the, the issue just disappeared. Mm. So it was actually a question of the honorable members of parliament having the information required. And the moment the information was made available to them, yeah. the issue kind do, of do went out of the... Do you think this will continue to run? Because we're going to stop for a break, and after the break, I'm going to put to you that maybe you over-regulate. Mm. And by over-regulation, maybe you're hindering the industry. Well, we, we, we are not over-regulating. And uh, the evidence of our not over-regulating is the fact that there are companies working in Uganda. These companies are investing in the country. The Honorable Minister has announced a licensing, announced a licensing round in 2017. Uh, this licensing round attracted companies into the country. Okay, let, let's stop for a break and then we go into that properly.